Hello and welcome to House Zap. This edition we are bringing to you post the match between Chennai Super Kings and Rajasthan Royals with the team from Jaipur won by 16 runs. And I have with me my friend and colleague Vijay Lokupalli to discuss this game. Good morning, Vijay. Yeah, good morning. Uh, and we have a good game to discuss today. Um, let's take a quick look at the scorecard. Uh, there was some seriously big hitting that was happening out in Sharjah. It, it did not seem to matter that the boundaries were pulled in because the sixes were going into the stands and beyond the stadium. Led by Sanju Samson for Rajasthan Royals and Steve Smith and then uh, Jofra Archer finishing uh, with a flourish, uh, getting 30 runs of that final over from Lungi Ingidi. Also, there was big hitting that we got to see. Shane Watson at the start of the Chennai Super Kings reply, and then Faktu Plessy and Mahendra Singh Dhoni toward the end of the innings. But then um, Rahul Tevatya picked up three crucial wickets and uh, pushed Chennai Super Kings back. And um, there was a comfortable win in the end for Chennai Super Kings. I remember the match for those fabulous sixes. So, my God, 33 in all. I mean, 17 sixes for Rajasthan Royals and 16 for uh, CSK. And obviously, I mean, we have seen many games in the past also with so many big shots. But here, there was a lot of action. Uh, there was, even the umpires were in, were, were in focus in this game. I think we will quickly take that um, umpiring decision. Uh, it was a howler, to say the least, uh, Vijay. Uh, the sixes you would have expected. Uh, the kind of bowling with the wet ball was a surprise. But I think all teams have now prepared for the due factor in in. Uh, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, the umpiring was a bit of a letdown, especially what Shamshuddin did. Uh, we got to see uh, Tom Curran bat against uh, his own brother, and there was a catch that was claimed of the, the thigh pad. I wasn't sure if it was an LBW decision or a hot behind decision that umpire Shamshuddin gave, but surprisingly, Tom Curran asked for a review when the team did not have the review, when Rajasthan Royals had exhausted its only review. And then uh, the umpire sought a review from his uh, colleague up in the TV umpire's box. It was a bit of a shocker uh, that that review should never have happened, Vijay. Well, it happened. You're absolutely right. It was a shocker. I think it happened because he saw the replay at the, on, on the screen and uh, he realized it, he had made a mistake. But at the, at the outset, he he forgot the protocol. I mean, he would have gone. He should have gone to Vinit Kulkarni at Square Leg, consulted him, and then maybe he, if he had doubts, he should have straight away gone to the third umpire instead of giving the decision, then re, uh, trying to review it. But uh, but rather, Raman, this is not the first time umpires have called the batsman back. Uh, we have seen. I've known uh, Suresh Shastri having given a decision, then realized, oh, he's made a mistake. He called him called the batsman back, even though there is no replay. There's no replay facility to be watched at the ground. And many years ago, I remember there was one very senior umpire. He called back the batsman in an Iranian Cup match after he had almost reached the dressing room. Imagine, he had left the field of play. So, such things have happened. But here, it shouldn't have because then you have so many facilities available. And uh, you are under, under scrutiny. And, and Shamsuddin is not a bad umpire. He, 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 he should have known that first protocol he should have consulted Vinit Kulkarni at Square Leg. There was also doubt whether uh, Dhoni knew that uh, he had picked up the catch on half volley. And uh, there have been questions on why Dhoni asked for that catch, why he claimed it as a catch. Vijay, uh, I have seen fielders at slip take catches on the bounce without knowing that it was coming to them after it had hit the ground. Uh, my own feeling is that Dhoni would not have known. Uh, I, I'm not defending Dhoni here. I'm just looking at what could go through a fielder's mind or a wicketkeeper's mind when he uh, when he takes a catch right in front of him. Uh, most of the time, when the ball is coming to you at that pace, you might even have your eyes closed when you're actually grabbing grabbing the ball. So my own feeling is that uh, Dhoni would not have known whether the ball hit the ground or not. Uh, there have been questions whether he should have claimed the catch at all in the first place or not. Yes, I will not doubt Dhoni's. Um 
sportsmanship. I mean, he is not the one who will cheat. Uh, but here, I think I'm not. I I can't speak for Dhoni because I don't know whether he he knew it or he didn't know it. But uh, I was speaking to Mohammad Azharuddin last night uh, on this very incident, and he said there are times when you don't get to know. You you don't know if the ball is bounced. I mean, it has happened in this case, and it has happened. Uh, in 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 slip squadron, you you when you, when the ball falls in front of you, you go for the catch. There are times, genuinely, he says, you 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 miss. You can't make out whether it has hit the ground. But here, I think, uh, because of the situation and the fact that he is MS Dhoni, he's supposed to be every, he's supposed to do everything right. So he will be under scrutiny. Uh, but I think let us not blow this out of proportion. It has passed. And uh, the, both the teams uh, came to accept it. Even the umpires, Dhoni was agitated, not because uh, there was no question of he claiming the catch. I mean, he 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 he, he appealed. Umpire gave. Umpire should have initially gone to the square leg umpire and review it. And this all this would not wouldn't have happened. Vijay, now uh, let let's look at another uh, factor of Dhoni. Since we are talking about Mahendra Singh Dhoni. Let us look at one other issue. I think um, it's very, very important that we bring it up before we discuss the big hitting that even he did. Uh, he came down too late in the order. Uh, he batted at number seven. And then he did not seem to show the intent. Uh, that is the public perception. My own feeling, again, is that because he had not played, and he, and he offered it as a defense at the end of the game, that he had not played for a long, long time and that he was probably not even in, in great touch with batting. And then um, uh, his, his batting at number seven, having sent up Sam Curran and um, Rituraj Gaikwa, two, two young, young players ahead of him, uh, there were questions asked about Mahendra Singh Dhoni. What are your own thoughts, uh, Vijay? Do, do, do you think Dhoni did right? Or, um, or could he have batted higher up in the order? Honestly, I don't want to sit in judgment in hindsight. Because whatever was happening when I was saw it, whatever was happening on the screen, I was supporting it. Because uh, I don't know what was the intent, but yes, Gaikwad had to be given his opportunity. Karan has in the past, uh, Sam Karan has, uh, uh, he has shown in the past that he can change the tide of the game. And remember, Raja Raman, there are two intelligent brains planning this. Stephen Fleming and MS Dhoni himself. And there are other players also who must be consulted, who must have been consulted. Here, everything looks very different in hindsight. What if, if Gaikwad had made runs? Tell me. We wouldn't have been talking all this. So, uh, if cricket is, it offers you to be a judge in hindsight. And uh, I, I will support Dhoni for what he did yesterday. He, he was absolutely right when he says he was rusty. He was not, he was not, in, he, he was not in touch with the game. But I think he proved himself wrong with those three sixes. He was very much touching the game. Uh, Vijay, you spoke about Stephen Fleming being a great brain. And uh, let's listen to what he had to say about the decision to bat Dhoni at number seven and the decision to send uh, Sam Karan and uh, Rituraj Gaikwad ahead of Dhoni uh, when the chase was on. I um, sort of have this question every year, but he's in the 12th over, which is pretty much his optimal time. Um, and, and sort of batting accordingly. He is uh, coming back from not playing a, a huge amount of cricket, so the expectation to, to see him at his best is going to take some time, but his hitting towards the end was very good. Bat Duplessis carried it forward, and uh, we weren't too far away. It wasn't the batting that I was worried about, to be honest. Well, expecting good things. Um, MS is suspicious towards the end of an innings, always has been. Curran was there to try and hit us and keep us ahead of the game. At that point, we were falling behind. He's got good hitting power, which you saw. Um, and Ritu just into the game. He's there to uh, disperse game, get him into the game in that order. Um, he just wanted to be aggressive. We've got a long batting order and just trying to use our resource smart. Very interesting point he makes, um, does uh, Stephen Fleming, about uh, Dhoni batting at number seven. In the end, of course, uh, Dhoni got those sixes and um, the tongues are still wagging. Uh, they haven't stopped. That if Dhoni could, could strike those big blows in the end, uh, my own feeling, Vijay, my own opinion, is that uh, the bowling would have been very different had Dhoni come on to bat at number five or even at number four. Uh, there would have been a different kind of a bowling. 
you you might have seen jofra archer and um, the left arm seamer jaydev munatkar come and bowl to dhoni a lot more than than uh, we got to see in the end uh, let us let us now cast our eyes on sanju samson uh, to be the standout player of the night as far as batting is concerned he seemed to be hitting the ball so cleanly that uh, it was a delight to watch him bat the way he did absolutely delightful and uh, they have been very unfair to him the selectors i i must say very unfair because they held it out against him saying he has an attitude problem so there are there, there are so many players in indian cricket with attitude problem and the here was a youngster it was a duty it was the duty of probably the team management i must say and uh, the seniors and the national selectors to have taken him into confidence spoken to him because he is an amazing talent it is not this is the first time he has played such a big innings uh, with so many sixes he is a very competent wicket keeper he is a very good wicket keeper and then he adds uh, his batting makes him easily the number one choice wicket keeper in the country today ahead of uh, rishabh pant and riddhiman saha and probably kl rahul also because he has he has an amazing ability to force the pace and his temperament is is, is second to nobody in this team so i feel for samson that he has had to sit out but you are right innings of the night was sanju samson um obviously played incredibly well today um just felt like everything he was hitting was going for six so um serious innings and uh, obviously josh coming back next game which is a big plus for us but um i thought our whole batting group um did well the, the few up top and um you know and jopper at the back end was was absolutely amazing so uh, nice start to the tournament I think we knew we were going to have to score some big runs on this ground um particularly with it getting Dewey um in the second innings and and skidding on probably a bit more so we knew we needed to score big runs and you know that's the role Sanju plays you know he, he takes the game on um hit some some seriously good sixes um and just had a positive intent and my role in that partnership was just to get him on strike he was he was going and I was trying to get down the other end and, and let him do his thing, and um, yeah, fortunately that worked out well. Did uh, the Chennai Super Kings spin bowlers make things easy for him, uh, Vijay? This was a thought that came to my mind when I saw uh, both Ravindra Jadeja and Piyush Chawla pick the ball really up and uh, allow Sanju Samson the freedom to to play those big shots uh, by pitching it up further to to the back, and they made things very easy for. Sanju Samson not taking anything away from Sanju Samson of course he he played a gem of a knock but i think the chennai super king spinner were quite slow let listen in to what stephen fleming had to say about how the chennai super king spin bowler responded to the challenge that sanju samson offered them no we were slow to adjust uh the heading was very good in their their first 6 8 overs um and we were slow to adjust i think we overpitched and and we're a little bit slow on that track it was a good surface but uh we were just a little bit too forward a little bit slow in adjusting well we we didn't adjust quickly i think the intent was there to adjust but our execution was poor and it was a case of just trying to um of just trying to stop them really get a wicket um steve smith was playing well also so it was a dangerous time and we just had to try and hang in there we did and we came very close to pulling it back to a, a manageable score but that last little burst probably um just put it out of reach please remember um sanju samson was in awesome form he was connecting every ball whether it was short whether it was over pitch turning not turning he was he was getting all his shots right and like i said he has all the shots also in his in his repertoire so if you remember chawla i mean he went for 47 runs in all right in in the first two overs and then he came back and gave away only eight runs so he he was struggling there is no doubt i mean everybody has been talking about his form but he has played uh, almost every ipl he has played with distinction some matches so i will not uh, i will i will not uh, uh, criticize the spinners because sanju samson was in in terrific form uh, last night so uh, yes and if you if you look at it Uh, what happens to what happened to the fast bowler in the last over ingidi 
I mean, he gave away the game. He gave away the game. Uh, but uh, would you blame Ingidi? Because look at the shots which Archer played. They were absolutely stunning. I mean, he was picking the ball from wherever uh, Ingidi was trying to pitch. And they were all huge sixes. So, it was not a CSK's day. Let us accept that um, uh, Rajasthan Royals got a, got a good, splendid start. And they finished it on a glory. So, it was their day and they won the match deserving it. Uh, Vijay, also it was interesting to hear uh, Mahendra Singh Dhoni speak about that last over from Ingiri. He said he was not singling, singling him out. But then uh, he pointed out that the two low balls that Ingiri bowled added uh, at least 14 runs to, to the final tally. And uh, if we see how thin the margin was, I mean, they, they lost by 16, 16 runs. And if those extra runs had not been given, if the score was around 200, we might have had a better game to watch. Uh, of course, there was plenty of hitting. We, we got to see Shane Watson get off to a very good start. But then uh, Murli Vijay should have complimented him. When you're chasing a target of 217, you can't be playing an anchor role at the start of the inning. You need to go uh, hammer and tongs at the ball. And I think uh, Vijay did bring the scoring rate down. Uh, Murli Vijay could have supported uh, Shane Watson a little better than he did. Absolutely. I think I heard uh, Dhoni talk about uh, uh, the situation where you can chase big totals, but you need a good start. So, here they did not. and But then uh, team management should have made it clear to Murli Vijay what was his role. I mean, did he have to compliment or just stand there and take singles? But uh, he was he was not in good touch. So, uh, I, I wasn't very surprised. Uh, Watson tried to make a match of it. And he, uh, the way uh, he, he did make a match of it, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree with me. But uh, Vijay, yes, he was at fault uh, not, not being able to force the pace at the beginning. Watson did uh, play a very good hand at the top of the order. But then uh, he was uh, outfoxed by Shreya Stopa. I thought it was a smart piece of bowling, uh, cramping him and then uh, getting him to balloon a catch to... The man inside the 30-yard circle at uh, just short of long leg. Very interesting though, with a wet ball, Rahul Tewatia bowled brilliantly. Uh, he bowled within his limitations, did not try too much. And I think the, the two spinners for Rajasthan Royals learnt lessons from watching the Chennai Super King, uh, Super King spinner. I think it was important for them to not pick the ball too full, too full up to the batsman. And I think they did really well. But... Um, would you say that Rahul Tevatia was a standout bowler last night on that track? He kind of adapted very quickly because if you see, uh, those big hits ha had to happen in the mid-wicket area because the ball was not coming up, it was staying low. So, you had to, you couldn't have hit them uh, square of the wicket. You had to either hit them straight by stepping out or probably uh, like what Watson was doing. He was playing the shots over mid-wicket, you know, and they were all power shots. So. Tevatia had has this tendency to to hustle the batsman. Uh, he's a very underrated bowler. I've seen him bowl for Haryana and in Delhi in those tournaments. He is he is a much respected bowler in in, in the local circuit here because he he hustles the batsman. So that's what he did uh, to Shane Watson, and that's what got him the wicket also. Uh, I was a little surprised at how the pitch was played. Uh, this is not the typical Sharjah track that we know. Um, it was two paced to begin with, and then uh, because of the dew, it, it, it rolled out into a batting duty, a uh, belter of a track for for batsmen. Uh, and my heart went out to the to the bowler, uh, whether you're a fast bowler or a spin bowler. It was going to be a challenge bowling on that track to batsmen with those wonderful bats, uh, which send the ball into orbit a long, long way. Yes, in fact, Raja Ravan, if you remember in the good old days when we went to, when we went to Sharjah, uh, bowlers would always be very worried for two reasons. One, uh, belter of a pitch. Uh, I, I mean, if you see, most of the stroke players have done wonderfully well there. Um, if you remember, it was at this very ground that Basit Ali hit a back foot six of Ambrose. I mean, uh, imagine, he could do it because it was a flat pitch. So, uh, and also the small ground gives you the confidence to loft the ball. I mean, you you more often than not, you tend to clear the field. So, yes, uh, bowlers will be in for a very hard time. And uh, uh, sixes and fours at Sharjah should not surprise 
old timers like us we have seen many great innings there and the last six innings everybody remembers very well let us now move on to the match tonight um, vijay it's going to be another humdinger of a game i think with uh, kolkata knight riders coming on for the first time and taking on mumbai indians uh, it's going to be east versus west today kolkata knight riders exciting talent with uh, people like uh, dinesh kartik leading the side and then uh, you've got andre russell as well uh, and then there are other other stroke players as well so it's going to be an interesting match tonight uh, featuring kolkata knight riders and mumbai indians yes uh, kolkata knight riders they have a reputation to defend uh, they have struggled against mumbai indians in the past also but they have some awesome uh, uh, batting lineup uh, the top order is very heavy uh, i i'm very interested in watching morgan uh, i mean he is he'll be available he is done with his isolation period and then cummins should be available for this game uh, dinesh kartik is coming at number 6 so you can see the 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 batting lineup uh, kkr has and they will have to obviously rely on the uh, on their batting strength to to put it across mumbai indians who will be very keen to uh, come out of the loss against csk and i expect rohit sharma to play a beginning in the tonight oh there, there is uh, one perennial ipl favorite sunil narayan as well for kolkata knight riders Vijay, uh, so before we leave, I think it's also important uh, to thank everybody who's watched us for, uh, for over the last few days, and then uh, ask them for any kind of feedback. We will be grateful for any kind of feedback. And as Vijay always says, criticism is welcome because I think we learn more from criticism than from from appreciation. Yes, I would I would request them to either like us or slam us. We we have been showered with a lot of affection. we have been um, given a lot of lot of love by the viewers I, and i'm sure that if they have got any suggestions for us to improve uh, they will be very forthcoming with that as well thank you very much vijay and i hope to catch up with you tomorrow morning yeah thank you